So a charity event now is intended by 25 people at which th three $50 gift certificates are going to be given away as door prizes. How many ways can we do this? Now this is, notice that all three prizes are the same here. So we could go with the basic idea of saying, okay, we have three people, there are 25 possibilities for the first prize, 24 for the second, and 23rd for the third. Or in other words, there are 13,800 different ways that uh, we could uh, pick three people from our crowd. Now, let's imagine now that we have three people. Um, a, uh, let's, uh, we're just going to call them A, B, and C for simplicity. Uh, so if A, B, and C were picked first, second, third, that would be one of these 13,800 possibilities. But if B was pickin picked first, then A, then C, then uh, this would also be one of those six, uh, one, one of those 13,800 possibilities. But really, these are the same outcome. In fact, um, there are six different outcomes. Uh, there are six different outcomes uh, that are all really the same outcome because order doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter who's chosen first, second, or third. So in order to compensate for this, we end up needing to take our 13,800 different permutations and divide it by 6 to come up with 23,000 what are called combinations. Combinations are what we call it when order doesn't matter. In other words, it doesn't matter who is chosen first. Now, the way we can sort of generalize this is the idea of the total number of permutations, so n, p, r, divided by, well, what did, where did this 6 come from? That's the number of different ways of ordering 3 people. Uh, so in this case, it was 3 people, uh, 3 people, 3 possibilities for the first person, 2 for the second, 1 for the third, uh, that is 3p3, or in general, this would be r, p, r. Uh, and this is how we define a combination, or how we calculate combinations, and we denote combinations with n, oops, n, c, r. Uh, so this is from n, uh, n choices. We're choosing r of them, but the order doesn't matter. So we're going to count a, b, c, the same thing as b, a, c. Uh, this is one way to compute it. The other way is using factorials, uh, and that looks something like this. Uh, so now let's look at, uh, let's look at an example. So, uh, a group of four students is to be chosen from a 35-member class to represent the class on the student council. Now, order doesn't matter here because they're all just representatives. Uh, so in this case, from our 35 students, we're going to choose four of them, uh, but the order doesn't matter, so this is a combination. So, uh, using our sort of first version here, the, pr the permutation version, we're thinking from 35, uh, oops, from 35, how many different ways can I pick four people if order did matter? And then I'm going to divide that by the number of ways of ordering four people. So this says, um, from 35 people, I need to pick four. So I got 35 choices for the first person, 34 for the second, 33 for the third, and 32 for the last choice. And then I'm going to divide that by the different ways of ordering four people. So then I have four choices for the first person, third, three for the second, two for the third, and one for the last. Uh, so this is the total number of ways of choosing four people if order matters, divided by the number of ways of ordering them, which takes care of the order, gives me 52,360 uh, different combinations.